Bye. Good. Okay, fantastic. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. We are global. I think three points on the globe in Canada and Australia and Israel. So happy to see you all. My name is Dr. Tova Goldfein. This is TMS Roundtable. Hi, Rose. You can introduce the guest. Good morning, Tova. <laughs> in the beautiful Mediterranean there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This morning, we're very blessed to have Michael Eisner. Now, Michael, welcome. Yep. Thank now, you. <laughs> uh, a pleasure. Now, Michael has had chronic illness since a little one. So he's got a good understanding of what most people are going through. But he also has a background in acting and understands the importance of breath work. Now, um, during his time with us, he spent time um, working with the presence process. This is the book we used, if it's going, yep, by Michael Brown. Now, we've done this as a book club twice now, and, and Michael was part of our team. And he became very interested in Dr. Judith Kravitz and her work. And what he did was he went ahead and he did the training course. So we invited him to come, A, talk about himself, talk about his life in general, talk about his struggles, and then tell us more about breath work. Is that how you see it, Michael? Um, Michael. Yeah, I, I so think... I'm getting you know, my Michael's puddle <laughs> from you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Acting led to breath work and really it led to yoga. And yoga, uh, breath work is a very, uh, you know, very important a limb on the eight limb of eight limbs of yoga. So, I mean, I love to talk about yoga. I'm a yoga instructor. I've been instructing yoga for five years and I, it certainly was one of the first things I went to when I s chose to be natural or, or to heal naturally. So we can certainly talk about that. Good. Well, go ahead. You've got the forum. You're the guest. <laughs> okay, I've got the floor. Go I got for the it, floor. man. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, when I was 18 months old, I was uh, given the gift of um, uh, something called writer's syndrome, which is uh, – uh, ex like extreme arthritis in my whole body when I was 18 months old. So I had a, an adverse reaction to seminal of food poisoning. I was in the hospital and separated from my family and uh, just very sick. So that led to a lot of um, autoimmune issues and immune problems throughout my childhood, a lot of hay fever, um, asthma, eczema, things like that. So I was just a sick kid, you know, always sick. And my mom did a great job taking care of me, you know, did the best for me. And, um, and then I was, I started feeling extreme pain in my hip at nine years old. So that's when AS, uh, ankylosing spondylitis showed its head and, um, reared its, its, um, its head. So then at 18 years old, I was diagnosed. And so, um, let's see here. Um, it took nine years. It took nine years, Michael. Yeah, nine years. There was a lot of confusion. I mean, it could have been anything, growing pains, uh, anything really. And so, you know, I didn't know what it was. My parents didn't. The doctors didn't. Can I ask didn't. if, uh, can I interrupt like I always do? Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you remember, um, like, a lot of these, because it was you were in pain, do you have memories I mean, 18 months is one thing, but do you have memories along as you were young of feeling this uncomfortable and watching your parents and what you felt? Yes, I do. And it's a lot of it is in, in hindsight, I realized that it was uh, an overshadowing sort of illness and it wasn't normal. To me, I thought it was normal. I thought it was absolutely yeah. normal to be sick and not be able to yep. breathe, not be able to run, not be able to, you know, always got to kind of watch how I play, you know, because I could run out of breath or being watching what I'm eating. Like food was uh, a danger to me. It was a threat, you know, because I could get a severe allergy and go to the hospital or die or not be able to breathe. So, you know, there was a lot of threats, but I, I guess I just saw the world like that when I was young. As normal. Yeah. As normal. That's what I thought was normal. Yeah. And so yeah. when I was young, I had really um, intense fevers um, as a, as a very young boy. And I think that's some of the earliest memories I have was going into these fevers and having 
uh, really strange experiences. Like, um, I'd, I'd have, um, feelings that, uh, noises would be horrible to listen to. And I'd, I'd get kind of paralyzed where I wouldn't be able to move. And, um, I would kind of go into a trance and I would, um, start, uh, I'd look at my feet or my limbs and they'd be like a million miles away and it'd feel like I wasn't really in my body. And, um, mm -hmm. then I'd start experiencing high pitch noises, like a very high pitch noise. And then I would kind of black out and go into another sort of, this is kind of weird. And this is another well, thing sort of I thing. really didn't think was a big deal. I thought it was normal. And it's only in retrospect that I'm like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> And I would experience like this really, I would see this image of a long string and it would represent like human flesh or the vulnerability of life. And I would see it being consumed by this senseless sort of void of um, morals and ethics. And it would just consume this vulnerable tissue. And uh, I think that was kind of my introduction to the mental mental body it's the senseless mental anger and fear deep fear and um you know i, I think that's Ooh. what illness is at the at the at the end of it it's fear and so throughout my adulthood i've had i've been blessed with understanding what this gift was i was given at such a young age is that and we all are a lot of us with chronic illnesses are blessed with this guidance and it's basically it's just confronting fear and that's what i've been getting better at doing and uh, yoga has helped um the presence process is an immense help in that i'd love to talk to you guys about it but really it's um being able to listen to and like be a witness to for me, my deepest fear, I think, was madness, like completely losing, losing my mind. Yeah. And, um, and I certainly came close to it. But through yoga, through understanding meditation and breath work, I think I was able to just listen to it. And through the fear of just like um, uh, Mr. Brown, Michael Brown talks about, it's like it's energy, right? It's energy that we feel. It's like a... Wow, that's true. inside of them, and there yeah. it is, and that's yeah. all it is. And we can separate from it, we can step back from it and just feel it, and then it dissipates. And that's where the power is. So, you know, I'm just kind of waking up to this, and um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Um, so, so, so continue where I didn't mean to interrupt. So, you continue to so you're you're not you're nine, you're 18, you know, you have ankylosing spondylitis. You obviously had writer syndrome. You had allergies. Now you have ankylosis spondylitis and you're 18. Yeah. Then what happened? Okay, so I got extremely angry with the doctor. And it was actually in my notes from her that Michael was a very angry boy. Um, I, was, I was very pissed off that there wasn't more guidance um, and that there wasn't a possibility that I could help myself on my own. It was just basically, here's the pills. This is going to get worse as you get older and it's never going away. Wow. And so, you know, um, I just, I didn't believe that and it made me angry. And so, um, you know, one of the most interesting things, and this is very common because I have a podcast where I interview people who've healed or they're getting better with uh, the same condition. And a very common thread between us all is that once we're diagnosed, it gets worse. So it's good to get di a, diagno a diagnosis because, well, at least you know kind of where you stand and you can move from there. The downside is that hearing that from a doctor, from an authority figure saying, you know, you're doomed to this horrible disease with your spine's going to fuse, you're going to be bent over in pain the rest of your life it starts to materialize because all of a sudden you become filled with fear and, and the way even we even more fear, even more fear. Yeah. And yep. the way I'm discovering we work is that our brain and our hearts work in alignment with imagery. So once we have an image for what it is, we start seeing it. And even if it's an instant, 
that image is played within us and in our nervous system. The neural pathways are, con are created and all of a sudden that becomes our identity. Reality, and our ego, Way to explain yeah, it. Our ego attaches to that and it, it mm. aims to gain strength through it. So this is another common thing that happens with uh, chronic pain is that we, our ego attaches to the identity of being sick and being ill. And it yes. looks for ways to strengthen it. So, mm. so this helps. This diagnosis is 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 a fuel for the fire. Um, but it's also an asset because we can now form groups and say, "Hey, this is the label." Now we can step away from the label, and there's more information out there, which. Um, I think Western medicine will eventually it can catch come up together then. Yeah, they'll come together yeah. because I don't want to demonize Western medicine at all. The truth is it's helped me out tremendously. Like when I've been in extraordinary pain and I've been able to take a pill, go to bed and then maybe wake up and be able to walk. I mean, or be able to breathe. This is tremendous. It's a gift. And when used wisely, there's the other thing that I've noticed and with me, is that that's a gift and it's like it's like a mulligan or a cheat you get it and and it's like well what are you going to do with that newfound um mobility Info. information because you're relieved you're no longer in so much stress and agony so and searching and searching and searching the searching so, is often so difficult isn't it yeah searching for for an answer Searching for ants for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can take a pill and you can gain a little freedom, what do we do from there? And so what I think is the best thing to do is to start moving your body. And that's, that's, that's for me, I mean, been huge. Which is like another it. medicine. So you take it's the another medicine. medicine. Get moving yeah. and be the medicine. And then be the medicine. Take take action. And yeah, Dr. Tova, I mean, she's saying that um, exercise is a natural anti-inflammatory. And it is. Like they've done tons of studies and your inflammation markers go down after a workout. And your serotonin and dopamine and all these levels are stabilized. Activated. activated. Yeah. So it's it's tremendously helpful. So, you know. If I found myself in that position, uh, as soon as I could, I'd get out and I'd start working out hard and sweat and get moving. Now, <laughs> there's been points in my life when I've been really depressed and really down, and that's when it gets hard because that's when the sp you know, and this is Spiral where down. The, yeah. you start spiraling. And the the thing is, those overwhelming feelings which I felt from a very young boy that's what usually started me spiraling down it's the feelings and okay, not can you draw that, can you draw that out a little bit more please yeah. for our audience so yeah. michael brown in the presence process does the most descriptive explanation of what this is and i'll go over it a little bit here so i've had this feeling this sensation inside of me of say fear or being un of extreme maybe numbness or boredom or feelings of um, so, uh, low self-worth or no self-worth. And I mean, it feels like depression. It feels like um, uh, a trap or like you're stuck and, you know, like doing anything. You don't want to, you don't really want to do anything or don't believe anything will help. So yeah. you just start spiraling and that can last years. And for me, it certainly lasts years. And what it is, is a sensation. It's a feeling from, Michael Brown talks about it really well. It's from our past, from our, from our childhood for seven years, or maybe the first seven or last seven months in the womb. They're just experiences that we've had as an infant, infinite, infant or a child that didn't make sense. We just, our, our mental body or emotional body, or no one was there to maybe support us and maybe sit with us during these uncomfortable times and maybe let us know that it's perfectly okay and it's valid to feel these things so without the understanding of what it is like say it's 
our parents have a little argument. It doesn't have to be very like, you know, horrible upbringing. The fact is all of us are confused by coming into this world. It's a confusing <laughs> experience and there's, you know, like a and, lot and that then, happens. <laughs> and then we make you scream when you come into the world. Right. Make sure and you're breathing. Slap them upside, upside down. And, and that was like, what do you mean you're, what are you, what are you doing? It's like the first trauma. <laughs> First exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. So that's right. And cry. The first thing you do is cry. Why? Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. To expand your lungs. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. all this comes back to us if like um rivulets or waves, you know, in a seven year cycle, just comes back all those feelings and sensations. And what they're doing is they're coming to us to um as an opportunity to integrate them and to actually take them in and to feel them. We're facing fear. It's all about growing up. I mean, that's why we're on earth is to grow up. And this is a part of it. <laughs> this is a part of it. And so to understand the emotional and sen sensorial world and to allow ourselves to sit down and begin to feel these feelings and to get better at feeling, Michael, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Oh, it's totally scary. Don't, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I was <laughs> at times going crazy, you know? And so, no, I, I'm not saying it's easy. And that's why there's a 300 page book written by Michael Brown describing how to do this and a gentle introduction to it. And he recommends doing it three times, maybe more, because it's easy, but it's also not because no one is taught this no one is taught how to feel and the yeah. truth is well, that it's the other way yeah. michael we're taught not Pardon to me, feel yeah. we're taught not to right. feel so we we're taught to not to feel right and even even in conversation you never actually really ask a person how they feel you say how are you and then you ignore what they've said yeah or they'll respond with oh good fine which isn't really the case because we've all got issues or worries or concerns that we'd like to share. But unfortunately, our society says no. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's so true. Beauty and the beauty, it's right, Rose. And the beauty of some of Michael Brown's stuff, which I've heard before, but it's Rose and I talk about it a lot now in our work. It's, you know, the feeling, the, 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 on discomfort, the pain that it's, it's a messenger. So we get to we get to um, implement into our life, into our life. We get to implement and understand our pain, our disease, by understanding the messenger and the message. So Michael Brown gives us an opportunity to to learn this new habit or new pattern you know, to, to override the other pattern that says, So, hey, Michael, come in and talk yes. about that. Yes. yes. Talk, talk about the messenger? Yes, yes. Right. The breath so, work. Yeah. The breath work? Uh-huh. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll expand on the messenger. So the messenger is the feeling, it's the sensation. And it will come in the forms of uncomfortable feelings or situations in our lives or through maybe some, something that someone says. And this is something I've experienced uh, to a massive degree in relationships, intimate relationships and relationships with my family. So someone just says something and all of a sudden I would go into um, a fit of rage inside of me. And that's another thing I thought was perfectly normal. And it would last days or longer. And that is dis-ease. That's a definition of dis-ease. And um, that's, I mean, that's the origins of it. You know, it's that confusion of thinking that um, this, this feeling or this idea or this, you know, me being right, because really that's what it is. Someone says something and I'm, and it's unjust, it's wrong. Yeah. And so we go into this mental activity and that, that's what Michael Brown talks about is that how we retreat to the mental body because that's the safe place is actually retreating from the present moment. Um, the present moment is a scary, can be a scary place to be. 
um, well, because it it's where all the feelings are and we're here yeah. right now. And so we retreat, we get the habit, we get in the habit of retreating to our minds. And this is where, you know, someone it's says something. safety mechanism. Yeah. Safety, absolutely. You see it as a safety mechanism. And then it's you can sort of, you can experience it then and, and watch your safety mechanism and watch what brought it, brought it about even, can't you? That's the whole yeah. thing. That's what the yeah. messenger is. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a mess ender. So this <laughs> message comes to us to help us get rid and, of the mess of our lives because <laughs> this is a continuum. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, Michael Brown talks no, about he, it. Oh, he did that one. Did, okay, mess ender. No, he the did. Mess, uh, the yeah. mess ender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so it comes to us and the practice is learning to recognize it as a messenger and then to learn to respond so rather than react yeah so in the past what and i have done this and it's common it's very common someone says something and we interpret it as a threat and we immediately fight back or we get quiet and retreat which is also um a reaction because we're emotionally blocked, you know, a won't talk mechanism. to them, defensive. Yeah. It's a defense mechanism. So what we learn is that it's a sensation, it's a feeling from our past that's here for us to integrate. It's come to us as an opportunity to feel it and to let it become like we absorb it and it becomes yeah. like nutrients to us and actually gives us energy because we're able to enter the present moment through it by learning through time that the present moment is not a dangerous place and our feelings and our emotional body is not a dangerous place and so then we can learn to respond and that's the response is to feel and to be aware of these sensations and to let them integrate and I mean, Michael Brown talks about, you know, if you have to, a day later or something, approach the person and maybe talk about what happened, you know, say it's something that happened with my girlfriend and she says something and it bothered me and I went away and integrated it. Maybe I just, because it's such an intimate relationship, she's probably would have noticed. And so maybe I could just say, hey, when that happened, um, I just, felt something and I integrated it. And so, you know, just yeah. so she's aware of what's happening. So, but it's not yeah. about, Hey, when you said this to me, it was wrong. You should never do that again. And, and it becomes like, because as soon as we react, we're like throwing fuel on the fires, like throwing gas on the fire. And that's where we spiral off into the Escalate. mental body. It yeah. escalates and it, it just doesn't but, get better. So, Michael, tell us a, a little bit. What you've brought up is very interesting. You know, when when we react instead of responding, it, tell us when you actually then explain to your girlfriend that you reacted rather than responded. Can you just sort of elaborate on that a little bit? Because it's a it's a wonderful idea to actually go back and say, yes, I did react because um, of the threat or how, how would you frame it? If, if I had reacted? Yeah. Like if yeah. I got angry yeah. and, and yeah. spoke yeah. up about it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I likely would say I would, uh, that's yeah, something like, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I would, I mean, I, I guess I would explain what had happened and where I was coming from and maybe some insights that occurred um, so that they know where I'm coming from. Yet that is a way entering the mental body and in a way maybe unnecessary, maybe because I'm, and this is this is I think where it gets really um, challenging. Like, when do you speak, 
and describe what's going on? And when do you just let it go? And oh, well, do that's why I'm your asking. Own? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you sincerely react, which has happened <laughs> for sure with me, you know, I have noticed myself getting into it with my girlfriend, you know, like she says something, I was triggered. I say something, she's triggered. Now it's on. Now we're unconscious and now we're both living Five out and playing out our fears and and we're not Five really talking to each other. Five year old for the audience, for the listeners to hear is that isn't correct me if I if I'm wrong or right, but isn't it usually a pattern from your childhood and her childhood that's being repeated? And then we get to say, oh, it's coming up again. I see that pattern. And now I get to integrate it. Isn't that mm. kind of ha what's, what's happening? That's kind of it. Yeah. So it comes up and it's to catch it in the moment, you know, say, oh, this is happening. And to stop, to stop right there. Because anything really that's said after that is coming from our childhood self. It's like, exactly. we're yeah. not conscious, we're not aware. And it's not coming from love, it's coming from fear. So not, not much good can come out of it. So me personally, I stop and I say, you know, I've been triggered and you know, the work really begins there for myself. And it's an opportunity. Exactly. It's an opportunity it's to become aware. Yeah. yeah, it's not about the other person. Thoughts. It's not about, about us, the yeah. It's really like a ghost. It's like an apparition. It's like an yeah. apparition from a long ago that's come around shadow. like a shadow, sure, for sure. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's not real. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's madness. When I talked about madness before, that's <laughs> it. It's insane. Wow. It's, or it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is what, what it is. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's from insanity, but it is. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay, my butt's pushed. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's for sure. It's harsh. it's harsh on your on yourself. Yeah. Yes, and it's also a part of humanity. It's a big part of us is that mental chatter and it's and that chatter from the past and believing that it's real and just. Right. And it's mirrored and played out through everywhere in our society. And it's strengthened everywhere in our society through the news, through you know, divorces or you know, wars. And to me, a war is insane. And I know that's harsh, but no, so is yelling at your girlfriend or your, you know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. it's a fight. It's, it's, the, same thing. Yeah. it's the same thing. Big yeah. or small, it's conflict. And to recognize it and maybe label it might be ugly and might be scary, but it's mm -hmm. universal and a part of us all. And we can step back from it because it isn't us. It's not us. Mm -hmm. Michael, my question to you, my question to you is um, why, I mean, why is it so hard? Because there's so much sadness and so much grief and so much misery when people, they're living in the past or the future. They're so unhappy and you can't, it's, it's so hard to be in the moment, but the past and the future are so unhappy for people. But they, they, they go there because it's comfortable, because it's the pattern. Can you, can you talk about how you do that? How you get yeah. yourself in the present moment and out of the past or the future? Right. right, so I use yoga to become present. And I believe that the presence process is a part of yoga. Um, bhakti yoga or, you know, um, raja yoga, mental and emotional yoga. These are big, big um, parts of yoga. And Yoga is the art of um, meditation. That's it. It's becoming still and and clear in your in your whole system. That's it. It's just a science to balance ourselves, um, and it's thorough. It's absolutely complete, and I'm only beginning to understand it, how unbelievably beautiful and elegant and complete it is. I just 
just a sliver of, of awareness of its potential. It's ancient. It's utterly ancient wisdom and a system to understand the human experience and, and to just be peaceful, and to be peaceful and to come into love and to our true nature, which is, you know, who we are. Um, so here's um, a question for yeah. you, um, Michael. Yeah. Um, oh, this is from my girlfriend's mom. Oh, oh, oh I love it. <laughs> oh, is any, and I does know. this integrating help directly with managing your spondylolis spondylitis? And that any interfere you might fear at times like this worsens your physical pain? Lois is asking. Yeah, that's a great question, Lois. Um, yeah, so the the fear has made the pain worse. And exactly. that's how ankylosing spondylitis is a guide wow. and a tremendous guide is that it will let me know and has let me know when I'm very off base. It's like a slap in the ass <laughs> by your mom or your dad, the high, high dad. You're, you know, like, um, it's a wake up call. So it's, it's like, wake up. Call. So, it, so this integrating has helped tremendously because by being aware of this fear and the mental body and um, the mental and emotional loop that can happen, by stopping it and feeling, um, it has stopped that loop. And it's helped me to recognize when it's happened because when I was younger and I got scared and I didn't understand, um, it was terrifying and it materializes a lot of pain and discomfort. And so that affects my immune system, affects my mental body, my ability to be present with my family and with um, the present moment. So um, yeah, so being able to integrate this stuff and to catch it and be able to respond, I am now in the position to uh, begin stepping out of fear and start feeling love. Mm. And we, <clears throat> sorry. yeah, and so that has led to a lot of freedom in my body and into my spirit and my heart and the, the whole system. And that's what I believe all of us are on earth to do. And there's many different systems that will help us with that. Yoga is one, religion are others. I and mean, they're all, you know, at their pure form in their highest intention is to help us on our way. I mean, yoga is very similar to uh, Judaism and Christianity and Islam. I mean, they come from, you know, basic stuff like the Ten Commandments. They're very similar in the, the eight limbs of yoga, the yamas and niyamas of that, you know, don't steal, be, be truthful. Um, um, don't steal and uh, don't hurt, don't harm, things like this, very <laughs> basic stuff. However, it's massive. It's utterly massive. Understanding the cause and effect. Achieving it. Yeah. Achieving it as yeah. something else and not that's hurting cool. yourself and others. Well, that's the primary <laughs> thing, not to hurt yourself first. Yeah, because, thank you, yeah. yeah. I mean, just think about on the flight, on a flight, on, on an air flight, the, the flight attendant will tell you to put the mask on first, don't they, before you Absolutely. help anyone else. So yeah, same goes for every, every aspect of life. Every yeah. one of us. Yeah. And I, you know, this is maybe a philosophical conversation or something, but I, I do believe that. I do believe that everyone, include, you know, on an individual basis, I wonder what, you know, the world may be like if we all did that, put on our oxygen mask first. Wouldn't it be awesome? Okay. <laughs> it would be pretty awesome. It'd be a heck of a start, you know? And It'd be beautiful. Yeah. It'd be beautiful, truly beautiful. I mean- And I was yeah. perfectly comfortable if your oxygen mask was different than mine. I just was okay with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you just put that, put that guy on. And so, I mean, that's what, that's what the guidance is through this chronic disease. That's the gift of it is, hey, you get to concentrate on putting that mask on and learning how to do it. And it's, you know, it's a complex 
um, in itself. Process. Yeah. Yeah. So, Michael, yeah. people yeah. are in pain. People are in pain. They're, you know, they're, they're, you know, their ears are ringing. Their, their legs hurting. They can't, you know, move. They are in pain. Like, what's your advice? Like, they just think the the world's against them. The body's against them. Tell us what you would do. What you've done in those times. What I've done, um, I, I when it got unbearably physically, I took a pill when when I when I found out about it. First nine years it was happening, I, I just laid in bed and was in a lot of pain. Um, but I took a pill, and then from there, I realized that that was a gift and an opportunity to start getting to work. And that meant I understood that eating a good diet is huge because I knew that when I ate a poor diet, I was mentally foggy and lethargic and didn't feel like doing anything. It's another thing, and I know that's happened before, and I, you know, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol for a very long time, over about 15 years. And so I know what it's like to use those, and they make everything worse, everything. And Initially, you your pain it. would go away, and you thought yes. that it was an answer. Ab absolutely helped, I think. <laughs> which is not anything I would advise, but let me tell you, it helped temporarily, but in the long run. But alcohol and drugs. Yes, it helped temporarily, <laughs> <laughs> but it ultimately just stopped my ability, my opportunity to get better. It delayed, yeah. it delayed the healing. Yeah. And you know, so I took a pill and then exercise. I'm at my best when I exercise right away. I'm also at the best, my best when I'm eating a good diet. And I'm not talking about eating a no starch diet. It's just something I would like to talk about, which I went down that road. I went down all the diets, trying to heal myself through diet and to reduce pain. And what it did was it made, um, a greater threat and more stress out of food. And food is a yeah. beautiful part of life and of it's a massive form of energy. So if I teach myself, which I did over a decade, that certain foods were a threat to me. And I'm talking about a major threat, a big time threat. Like I was terrified that. of certain foods. Yeah, for sure, terrified. So what I did was I learned to eat a balanced diet a lot of vegetables, a balanced, wholesome diet, a normal, healthy diet. And we all know what consists of that. I don't need to go over it. We all know what helps to eat a good diet. Exercise is amazing. And it doesn't have to be anything that you don't want to do. It just involves what, like, what I like to think about is what is your idea? What do you, what do you admire out there in the world? Is it a gymnast? Is it a weightlifter? Is it a, a ballerina? Is it, what is it? And then become it. Why not you become it? Why not you do your best at achieving that? Because in you, you probably admire that because it's somewhere inside of you. Point. It's something that you're curious about. And why not oh, do your best and go yeah. for it? Like, cause yeah. it helps. And it's like already inherently in us with our beliefs and our, in our heart. And in our mind, we, we see it as a great thing. So, I mean, for me, a yogi or a gymnast or a, or a diver, like a high diver, to me, I'm just like, that's the most amazing thing. So I train in yoga and I do strength training and gymnastics. And I'd love to learn to be a high diver. Um, you know, one thing at a time. It's on your bucket list. <laughs> it's on my bucket list for sure. So, okay. So that's another thing. Um, but I mean, getting right to what you were saying about when you're really lost or when I have been really lost and really, I, you yeah. know, there's times when I, when I literally just was laying on the ground with my leg, my hands in between my legs with the, t the curtains drawn for a very long time. And what got me out of it was just, I mean, eventually something inside of me just said to start moving and to pick myself up and to start doing something and to stop numbing myself it's usually you after listened, you listened to the voice you listened to yourself which is we're so good at ignoring ourselves and listening to someone else it's like go inside and hear what your heart you, 
we know, we know what it is and it involves us getting up. It's as simple as getting up. Like, I don't care if you're crying because, or you're completely lost, you know, whatever it is. Get up and move. Get yeah. up and move your body and start talking. That's another thing. I wouldn't talk to anyone about this stuff ever, ever. <laughs> I wouldn't talk to my family about it. I wouldn't talk to my friends. You know, I'd just be miserable and talk, talk. There's tons of free resources, communities, become a part of a community and, you know, a healthy community. There's a lot of um, chronic pain groups out there that are not healthy, good environments to become a part of because they are the ego trying to strengthen itself through being ill and sick and justifying how sick it is. And that is the spiral down. It's... Yeah we have to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and there's no free lunch and there's no way out of it. It comes down to the common knowledge that we all have, especially with chronic illness. And we have to remember it's not cancer and it's not a serious, serious, serious illness. It may feel like it and don't get me wrong. I appreciate how difficult it is, but the truth is it's our body attacking ourselves. It's us attacking ourself, the mind yes. afraid of itself, it perceives a threat. And the truth is we can become aware of this and begin to move away from it. So yeah, begin moving your body. And if you're feeling like that right now, if there's someone listening to this, just start moving, start moving in any way you can. You know, I've been there where I literally could not move. Everything in my body hurt, everything hurt so much. And I had given up, completely given up. You know, and so yeah. and you you just got to move against it, don't you? No matter what, you just, you've just, you just got to it's like one swimming foot forward. upstream, one foot forward. So the other side of time. that movement is relief. Is relief. You, you keep moving. At some point, the body will just because you know most pain, most it's inflammation, something itis at the end, and the body wants movement in order to react and respond to the inflammation, like you said. Yeah. It wants movement in all ways, and not just physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, it wants to move. Our bodies, our spirit, our everything, that's what it is. It's a lack of freedom. So uh, for me, I, I breathe and I meditate every day. And let me tell you, breath work is a gift. It's a God-given gift, and it's unbelievable because it reshapes your whole brain. It's, and it's, free, gonna, it's free. It's free. It's free. It's oxygen, and we're learning how to breathe. And yes, and and, it's, and you can do it any time of the day, and no anytime, one even needs to know anywhere. you do it. And yeah. I, probably, if say I was feeling like that in the past, where I couldn't move, I guarantee you, my diaphragm wasn't moving. I guarantee you, it was stuck. Good point. And I it's stuck stuck only up here. All, yeah. all up there and very shallow breathing. And that's where fear is. The breathing up here, you know, it's that we're startled. We've been startled, right? So we're trying to catch our breath. So like wow. learning to breathe that breath yeah. down, down yeah. in our diaphragm is where we start feeling. And this is where Michael Brown is so dead on. And this is what I started realizing when I chose to be healthy is that I started noticing that the present moment and I started getting present. And in the present moment, there really is no suffering. And so what he talks about is, is how for him, he used that as the guide. He said, what practices helped me get into the present moment? What practices produce present moment awareness? And let me tell you, yoga, breath work, the presence process are unbelievable resources and they're cheap yoga i mean going to yoga studio is expensive but you can do it at home for free and you can take a course on udemy for 12 dollars, and it will give you the full almost like a massive big breath of what yoga really is and you can study it and you know the material is out there and i, I mean this is material that yogis was held in trust for yogis and yogis alone. And now for whatever reason, it's been released. And I think a lot of information and systems and 
are being released and people this information and is out there these systems are out there they don't have to cost a lot um Can you share what, what, what um you learned from dr sklar about what dr um sarno said about the presence process remember um what uh, dr Kravitz, the, john sklar told us that john sarno thought this oh yeah was, yeah you know what he said so dr sarno gave um, the presence process, the seal of approval, mm -hmm. stating that this is probably the best description and guide uh, of how to um, integrate emotion and to understand emotion mm -hmm. and what that is and those uncomfortable sensations and feelings. And, um, and you know, I, I was blown away when I started listening to Michael Brown blown away. And the other thing I think is important to talk about is that if this is not for you, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. There's other ways you can learn. And if other none avenues. of this appeals to you, don't worry about that either. It's not a big deal. If it calls to you, if this system makes sense to you and you're like, wow, yes, I'm curious about this. Sincerely curious for yourself, for you, no one else, then great. What a great path. What you know? What a wise man! Yeah, very Michael smart. Brown is so wise, so wise, and it's important. you're wise. You're also I'm talking about Michael Eisner. Yeah, Michael oh. Eisner's wise. <laughs> yeah, your Thank expression you, yeah. is very beautiful, and you're you're just. Uh, I think you should be an actor, but anyway, that's. Oh, yeah. I would love to uh, uh, answer two questions. One from Carolyn Rowan, which we haven't met before. I'm happy to meet you, Carolyn. Carolyn, oh, that's my um, that's yeah. my great great friend, my <laughs> great friend of my whole life's um, mother, who is also a great friend. So oh, thank welcome to oh, lovely the round table. Rose and I love meeting new people. Great insights, Michael. How much is the right support to help you to move forward? part of the healing. Not everyone can do it on their own. Right. It's a great question. I couldn't do it on my own. Not at, not at all. I, I called out for a lot of support, a ton of support, and in all different ways. No, not everyone can do them on or I didn't do it on my own at all. Some people have. Maybe. Michael Brown didn't. Um. <laughs> Maybe yeah, some, I, I, I don't think so. Michael Brown yeah, spent Michael, seven I, years. Michael Brown had a horrible neurological condition in his face, and he spent seven years searching. Searching, asking for country. help and guidance. Yeah, yeah. so, the, but I think Caroline brings up a good point, is where do you start asking for help? Like, say we go back to the that right person places. who's on the ground and um, desperate mm -hmm. and has lost hope. Where do we reach out to? So, I mean, for me, I started with a naturopath. I learned how to eat well. I learned to understand how nutrients was absorbed in my body. And not any, everyone can afford that. I appreciate that. But we can understand nutrition and all the information is out there online <laughs> to eat a good diet. Um, I have seen therapists. I have seen... Um, I've reached out to both these women here, and they both gave me a free hour of their time to talk to, um, you know, and so, like, there, there's tons of resources there, tons of podcasts, and I definitely recommend asking for help. In fact, please ask for, you can contact me, um, and you, there's anyone that, anyone, see, for me, anyone that I identify or I was able to like I was curious about or maybe had some resistance to <laughs> were people that um, were great guides to me. I mean, one of the hardest things I heard was from a guy named Tom Campbell and he introduced me the concept that perhaps I chose this um, illness. Perhaps I chose this to learn from because I wasn't learning it any other way. And this came to me when I was not uh, 18 months old. So I don't know when I chose it, but it was a long time ago and it's helped tremendously. So this has been a, a guide. This has been a help. I asked for this help. I asked for this guidance. Um, this is Patty's question. Um, yeah. Did I ever obsess over my symptoms? symptoms? A thousand percent. And that's the mental body. I obsessed to 
to an unbelievable degree. And it, as a perfectionist, um, and that's, I guess, where that maybe came from. But I obsessed over diet. My parents could tell you just how much they did. Like, I, I wouldn't eat certain things. I would obsess about shoes, which shoes I could wear and not wear. I would obsess about what healing modalities were good. And I'd get stressed out about which healing modalities could help me. And I would stress out about how I was going to get enough money to afford the next thing. Um, I would obsess about relationships and the problems that would come up in them. I'd obsess about um, um, shame and guilt about all the things that I believe I did wrong uh, to such a degree that it created massive illness in my, in my body and prevented me from being present and there for my family and my girlfriend and my loved ones. Um, so yeah, I obsessed with all kinds of things and I think I obsessed with stuff from a very young age and um, Rose, you probably identify that maybe as a, a defense mechanism. Uh, I certainly know it was because it's what I knew. It's what I knew how to cope because I was, I felt desperate and I felt like I was losing my breath and I felt like I was losing life and that everything was slipping away. And so, yeah, I was obsessed with clinging and grasping. That's, this is a, one of the yamas, one of the basic principles in yoga wow. is non-grasping. It's holding on. Yes. That's obsession is holding on to life. And Michael Brown talks about um, how um, that's where appreciation comes in. And this is a massive lesson because grasping is the opposite of appreciating. And appreciating is what God, if you believe in God or whatever, our higher power, whatever it is, is what we're given. And what we're given is life and so by being obsessed or, or grasping we're not appreciating what we have we're wanting more okay okay so and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that there's nothing wrong with that but that's yes, right. we're gonna say rose we got to take off no 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 okay i want to know i <laughs> yeah. want to know where you split it in half and went from grasping to appreciation that okay. gap in the middle. Tell us about so, that. All right. So I'm I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. It's happening. However, I am aware of it. Um, I'm I'm I am aware of it. And uh, so right in the middle, the grasping is coming from fear. So let's say. And where's fear coming from? Fear's coming from. Um, fear's coming from. A perceived That's threat is coming from a habit, is coming from a neural pathway, it's coming from a survival technique. Um, fear is coming from, from maybe God as a messenger in order to learn and grow. Um, fear, so let's say, let's say I, I, okay, this is it. Um, let's say I find this brand new form of healing and it's 20, 2995 and I don't have that much money. And I start obsessing with the fact that that's the only thing that's going to make me better, that that's what I need in order to overcome this illness. So that's fear. I'm operating from fear now and I'm grasping because the truth is the appreciation comes in when I relax my diaphragm, my jaw, my shoulders, and I start Lovely. feeling the emotion that's riding underneath that grasping. The fear is really what's, and this is the same thing with pain. Say I felt extreme pain in my back or whatever. It's the emotion that's riding underneath that pain is say fear or the grasping so i stop and i recognize it and i say yes. i'm grasping i'm trying to hold on to life i don't need to do that i am alive i am and that's alive. where your breath comes in that's where, that's your where breath, breath can come in our breath yes. will, uni will unite us 
to the present moment right. and at any time we want. And anyone can do this at any time. Exactly. So <laughs> it's actually tremendously beautiful and it will relax us and calm us down. And maybe we'll start feeling those uncomfortable feelings, but we'll become better. And accept them. Yeah. And accept them. And, and that's where the lesson is. That's, it's just that it's breathing and letting it in, letting it in. Okay. So feeling it in your face or your heart or just the sensation. One of one thing that someone taught me that was, a tremendous tool may or may not work for you is that say something triggers you or bothers you or scares you um, is to when you can step away from the situation and go back to it Michael Brown kind of talks about this think about it think about it let your mind go on the tangent my girlfriend said this thing she shouldn't have said that I, I always clean up the house I clean up, I do my bit, you know what I mean? That whole tangent, and then step away from it and feel it in your body. Just feel what it what it is in your body. Feel it. The tension. Yeah, the tension, the heart racing. Maybe it's just energy. It's just energy. And this takes time, and then start thinking about it again. Let your mind blah, 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 and then step away from it. And then do that several times, and eventually what we notice it's just a sensation and fear is just a sensation like energy just like anything else it's just a sensation it's a feeling and when we get out of the mental um loop of it that's where there's no power it doesn't have power it's just a sensation it's just a form a form like our cell phone a form like um, what is trapped energy, isn't it? It's trapped energy. It's trapped energy. But yeah. breathing, yeah. breathing is like, that's where we start by breathing and feeling it. That's when it starts moving. It starts moving. Yeah. And these are baby steps. These are baby steps that eventually start leading somewhere. There's a tremendous amount of guidance. And the thing that I would say is if Michael Brown speaks to you, maybe start listening and maybe start reading the book you know um there are so many different ways to you know learn and to grow um tom campbell is an amazing guy to listen to about growing up um uh yoga is a tremendous system to learn about growing up any religion at its heart is a tremendous system of learning to grow up I'm not advocating any of these things i'm just saying there's tremendous Wisdom yes. in them and breathing um, is 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 massive. So what do I do? I meditate. I breathe. I work out. I eat a healthy diet, a normal healthy diet, and I practice these tools. I practice um, emotional awareness and um, and developing my emotional body um, and emotional body awareness and my spirituality and and okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, tell us about breathing in love. Breathing in love. Okay. Mm. Well, I mean, love is what we are. So when we remove everything or stop identifying, That's what's love and joy and peace are there. They're there okay. and infinite. They're utterly, yeah. infinitely there. Yeah. And that is what we are. And so am I pain free? <laughs> right now? Yes. Right now I am pain free. For the moment. I don't feel any but in pain. General, right now. Are you pain free? In general? Yeah, I'd say, you know, I'd say I'm 90, 96%, 96% uh, pain free. I I'm off all medication. I had to take zero medication uh, for pain. Um, I was on um, and SADS for years, um, never went on biologics. Um, but I, I can tell you this, I am in less and less pain every year since going on this path. And I know yeah. I'm moving in the direction that works for me. And I know I'm getting better and better. And that's <laughs> what counts. You know, there are some people who I've talked to and interviewed. I have a podcast, the Ankylosing Spondylitis Natural Health Podcast. I've interviewed some people where it's gone, just gone. 
for me, that wasn't the case. Um, maybe it was a little slower. However, a lot of these people, their pain came on suddenly in their 20s. Mine came on a long time ago, and it's maybe leaving a little slower. Maybe I need a little bit more guidance from it, and I'm grateful for it. Let me tell you, I am so grateful for it because it got me up. It got me moving. It, it inspired me. Pain is an incredible motivator, and it woke me up because I was in a lot of – and let me just say the physical pain was was bad, but the emotional, spiritual, mental pain was definitely worse. Well, James here. James is a, an actor that acts with my um, yeah. my girlfriend and uh, come from away. So this is great information that I will share with a suffering family member and use some of the tips myself. I often forget to breathe, to really breathe. You know, we all catch ourselves, you know, skipping a breath or two. And it's once we're mindful. The one thing I love about Michael Brown is that, you know, he tells you how to breathe but we are breathing all day. And so we get an opportunity to be mindful with every in inhalation and every exhalation, which is beautiful. Like Rose said, it's just a beautiful way to ground us, our breath. And um, you were tell go back to a little bit about your acting and how that taught you about the breathing. Hi, James. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure James knows actually a lot about breathing. Probably know that when he's on stage and notices his breath, He's probably more present. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. He's a tremendous actor. I've seen him on stage. He's a Broadway actor. This guy's a big time actor, um, and a hilarious man. I big. I admire his uh, his um, talent and his skill a lot. Anyway, um, when I'm I've been on stage a lot, and when I do say. Say I notice that I've gone into my head, which has happened, and become fearful of, say, not knowing my line. If, say, I learn to relax and breathe and drop everything, stop thinking about it, maybe that's where the line is. The line's right there for me, just floating around there because I stopped trying so to grasp it. you got anxious on stage and recall oh my gosh, that, yeah. and you were in that moment, you're like, I'm feeling anxious. I'm going to, like, tell us, talk. I love, this is like, I want to hear yeah. What yeah, <laughs> acting is an amazing craft and a uh, first uh, personal growth. Um, and it, it we're introduced. We're all acting, aren't we? We're all acting. All we're all time. acting. We're all playing a role. We're all doing our avatar for sure. And um, uh, acting actually brought me to to this this work or to heal. That's what I was thinking. It, yeah. it, and it showed me and it woke me up for the first time because I, I was training with a, a teacher that used a technique called relax, relaxation technique. And what it was, was she asked me for the first time to sit down in a chair and to stay there. And what we did was we just relaxed our whole body, relaxed everything. And we would just isolate one part of our body, one muscle group, and we'd slowly move it. And then we'd move on to another one, just another little joint and start moving it. And let me tell you, this was excruciatingly um, uh, mentally and emotionally painful for me because all the, all the negative talk came up. This is, this is uh, worthless, not worth my time. This is garbage. I don't like this, you know, but it's not doing anything. This is never going to work. But at the same time, I was looking over at other people who were doing it and had been doing it for years, and they are immensely emotionally connected. They're not thinking. They're just letting their emotion pour right out of them, and they're speaking lines at the same time so that they'd have us memorizing text and then doing this exercise and all of a sudden our emotional body is flowing, we're speaking text, but we're not trying to act out the thing. Yeah, yeah. And this is the key that I learned sitting in that chair is that my emotion had nothing to do with my story, my personal life story. I always thought it was like if I needed to cry, say in a movie or a, t or a play or something, I needed to go back into my life and relive a moment or something from my story. And the truth is our bodies are a well of emotion and we don't need to relive anything from our past. 
there's a massive untapped energy and emotional energy reservoir in there and it's in each cell of our body and all that emotional memory it comes back and it just comes up like in a meditation because that's what it was it was a meditation and so all of a sudden i'd remember something and i just start crying and the teacher would come come around and be like relax your jaw let it out and i'd be like oh this thing happened she like has nothing to do with that nothing to do with your past nothing just let it out let it out, Michael. It's just the body, just the boy letting this stuff out. And the more I did it, and I mean, I would have to go back to it and back to it. And I'd be scared to go back and sit in that chair. But the more I did it, I couldn't believe what was coming out of me and what was coming out of the people around me. And the art of what I learned was that then we stood up and then we would use imagination where we would use like we'd start, say, recreating a shower. And so you recreate taking a shower and she'd be like, Michael, feel that the, the hot water on your skin, see the soap, see the tiles on the ground or in your shower, notice the details. And the bizarre thing is I'd go back to showers, say, and I remember the details of my shower or my bathroom from when I was a kid. And then it would trigger emotion or whatever. And it would all come up. It's all there. We, we will never forget any, it's all recorded. All moments of our lives, it's all there. Are recorded. In it's all muscles, there in, in vivid the, detail. Okay. In, in yeah. vivid detail to the point where I had no idea I knew the smell Actually, and the texture of the floor of my bathroom when I was growing up. It's all there. So anyway, I, I, what I learned was that... Um, I started noticing that I was breathing and moving and started becoming alive. And that um, in that state, I was fine and I started feeling really good. And so I, I realized and I learned that I was meditating. And so I learned to meditate elsewhere. And oddly enough, and this brings us back to Michael Brown and um, uh, Judas, how do you pronounce her last name? Travis, from, Travis, Travis, Travis. from Transformational Breath Therapy. I went and did this seminar, uh, Transformational Breath, and it reminded me a lot of this relaxation technique. Uh, it's different, but it reminded me a lot of it. Um, so all these emotions are there and can be brought out with our breath, wow. trigger points on our body, um, and... It's old trauma, say, that we just held on to and we stuffed down and repressed and we didn't allow ourselves to let it out. And let yeah. me tell you, it feels good. It feels good to let it out. And through it, I believe we become a little bit more present. And these are baby steps. It's not like all of a sudden you're going to breathe and, yeah. and then you're free and enlightened or something like that. This is my girlfriend here, my, my partner who I live with. <laughs> Ironically, <laughs> I have my fan club here today. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Ironically, many of us actors. <laughs> Right. Oh. We're more aware and present yeah. and alive on stage than we are in life. And yeah. I, you know what? I, oddly enough, I would have to say there might be a lot of truth in that. You know, I've, I've seen people who I was really, really connected with and, uh, and I would see them in a scene and I'd be like, I have never even seen how alive that person is. And you see them on stage and you're like, wow, look at them, look how alive. And I don't even feel like I know this person. And yeah, it's weird because it's like, it's like acting gives us the permission to be present. Wow. It gives us the permission. And that's, that's the art of it is to be fully immersed in this moment. And you're right there and there's nothing else. And I mean, that's when it's, it's tremendous. And yoga talks about this. Yoga talks about this. And it's, this is one of the, the highest state which you're trying to achieve through this system of yo oh my gosh do you see rose has got her eyes rolled back right now <laughs> uh, she's like talking about yoga again michael i'm just joking <laughs> anyways um samadhi is um samadhi is the state of absolute absorption and i was listening to a um a podcast 
on Vedanta, which is uh, Hinduism, part of Hinduism and yoga. And they, he was stating that samadhi is something that we're all in right now. It's the absolute state of absorption. And we are so convinced in this reality. We are so absorbed in this reality. That is a state of samadhi. And that's the highest state of yoga. And we can also achieve it through uh, meditation. And yoga is a different, maybe a different form of samadhi. But the thing is to be completely absorbed with the universe and so can um, you say so, that in like people terms? Like, so what should we do? Oh, we, that's, we're, we're what do you do with that? What should we do? <laughs> you don't need to do any of that. Just yoga is a is a system that helps us um, move towards peace and love, and that's all samadhi is. It's just love. Oh, okay. God, it's it's just absolute bliss. Um, it's well, our true funny, nature. You know, I, I wanted to say you're speaking just beautifully. I mean, I you know, I really, we don't have people like you on the show a lot, but it's just the way your expression is beautiful. You're the first actor we've had. <laughs> really, it's been beautiful. But I want to say something, you know, some people that I work with in Israel, you know, they say that disease is the cry of the soul. And yeah. we're just right back there to, like, self-compassion and, like, just that everything is okay and that everything will be okay and that everything was okay. And I think yoga is just a real expression of that. And the Eastern way of healing is, you know, like, I, I just, I, I don't want to speak. I mean, it's just really beautiful. And, 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 you know, we probably have to get off soon, but I could just, it's been really wonderful, Michael. I mean, Rose, thank you for the suggestion of Michael being on. What a yeah. wonderful guest. <laughs> no, it's been a real pleasure. And, you know, I, I, I do, I, um, uh, I talk, um, I, if you're interested more about ankylosing spondylitis and what some people have gone through and how they have started feeling better, uh, the podcast, I interview just normal folks who have, who have brought themselves to start feeling a lot better. And these are great stories. Um, and um, it's a great uh, way in. Um Oh, shoot. Yeah. I got to plug in my yeah. computer. <laughs> oh. What'd you say, Rose, dear? Could you put Michael's um, email address, not email address, what do you call it? Um, link, link to the podcast. Yeah. 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 yeah, link to his podcast. We'll yeah. put that in yeah, the, the show notes. It's called it called? Yeah. The podcast. An Ankylosing spondylitis. Hey, I need Nat the uh, spell check. <laughs> <laughs> Natural oh, health. Yeah. Cool. No. I'll get um, I spell check right here. Yeah, I mean, my my intention was to come on and and you know, pass on some practical advice, and you know, I I think if are you saying you didn't? I didn't. Yeah, no. You did. <laughs> you mean you did? I, yeah, I, I you know that's and yet I, you're telling yourself you didn't. No, I mean, I I it, that was the intention, and I and you've I, done it. Good, good, good. Get moving, get moving, folks. Get moving. What if better. I can't move, and what if I'm scared to move? Okay, this is the greatest thing because I was scared to move, and the truth is, if it's um, chronic arthritis, you'll be okay. You'll be all right. Yeah. No matter what it is, you'll be. Okay. No matter what it is, move. You know, if you're, sp you know what. Um, you know, I have, you know, sometimes it's so bad that maybe you take a pill and you need to lay down. But if you can walk, walk, go for a walk, walk around the block, okay. you know, yeah. even, if you're limping, even if you're limping, walk, yeah. walk, do yeah, a push up cool. and the next day do more and the next day do more and do more and the next day eat better eat more vegetables, eat, eat, eat well, learn to eat well, learn to love your body, learn to treat your body like a, a garden, support your mind. What helps your mind? You, you know, what, what helps you have a clear, open mind and start learning Just start like, it's a little experiment. It's a science experiment. And we're the, you know, the guinea pigs mm -hmm. and one foot at one foot after another, and you'll right. feel better. Right. How it's transformed. Transformational breath is going great. 
at this stage right now, it's it's like an open mystery, and it's revealing insights to me that um, that I was unaware of, and I'm growing through it, and I love it, and I know that there's a lot there. There's a lot there, and um, and I'd like to also say that it that Michael Brown's breathing technique is very similar, and it's all you need. You don't need to pay huge money and go to these workshops. I'm doing it because I'm very curious about it, and I love what I'm discovering, and I intend to learn as much about the breath as I can, and then I'd like to pass it on in a in a form that's uh, available and not too expensive so that, you know, it's accessible. But it's all there, guys. It's all there. You can take a course on pranayama on Udemy for $12. And you can con and I can put the link in here about where I learned a lot about pranayama. He will give it to anyone for free if you can't afford $12. Wow. Um, and this is like a 30-hour training about coming into your breath. So, I mean, there's wow. tons of resources out there. Um, and you don't have to pay a lot. That's, that's the grasping. I love what I'm discovering in transformational breath. It's a, it's a nugget of, of beauty. And I love what I'm discovering and I'm going to keep going with it. I'm wow. going to be training to be a facilitator this year. So I'm very good. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you know, Dr. Judith Kravitz says breathing in love is, is the way to go. Wow. As each breath that you bring into your body, bring in love with it. Yeah. However you see love. Beautiful, Rose. And if that brings grief, that's good. If it brings sorrow, that's good. It's all part yeah. of love. Yeah. yeah. And if it brings anger, it means that we're protecting ourselves. So breathing in love, and, and love is the core of our lives anyway. And unfortunately, it becomes damaged, I suppose, by all the things that we, we bring on top of it. All our defences, all our anxiety comes on top of our love and we're not able to connect to it. So notice your anxiety, notice your defences, so that love can be breathed in every day. And Michael, thank you so much. That's a pleasure. It's been a delightful. And you know, all being well, we will do the presence process again. Yeah. And hopefully you'll be part of it. And hopefully Cheryl will be part of it as well. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. And, and what yeah. Michael Brown says about the breath, why he chose this breath, which was with Dr. Judy Kravitz, <clears throat> it's the most like normal breathing. you in and out, right. in and out. So it was like, it felt to me like something I could, I could connect to. You know, not and, and not be a yogi on the mountain. I could just be yeah. Tova and just, you know, yeah, because, because a yogi in the and suburbia. I to add to Rose when she said, like, also we have expectations of how we should be or how we should love or how we should not be. Like, we have to accept ourselves. Like, you know, acceptance. But anyway, oh, I could go on and on. Michael, delightful to have you. We will have you back because oh, Rose and I are doing this forever. Rose and I are doing this till. Till, yeah. For a long time, get used yeah. to these faces. <laughs> Good night. So, Michael, thank you so much. Bless your uh, heart. It was wonderful having your whole family here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love you guys, and thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Thanks Michael. Thanks, Tova. Bye-bye. Bye, Rose. Bye. Bye. Wait,